थ्री इन द इंटेंसी ऑफ सोसाइटी एवरी ऑथर इज नेसेसरीली ए पोइट लैंग्वेज इट सेल्फ इज अ पोइट्री एंड टू बी अ पोइट इज टू अप्रीहेंड द ट्रू एंड द ब्यूटिफुल तो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर अंजू गुरावा आई एम टीचिंग इन इंग्लिश डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे आई एम सिग्निफिकेंट कोर्स रिलेटेड टू पोएट्री गिवन बाय पी बी शैली काइंडली फॉलो काइंडली फॉलो द वीडियो एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब शेयर एंड लाइक माय चैनल सक्सेस मैट्रिक्स थैंक यू वेरी मच द पोएट और दो सु इमेजिन एंड एक्सप्रेस दिस इन डिस्ट्रक्टिबल ऑर्डर आर नॉट ओनली द ऑथर्स ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड ऑफ म्यूजिक of the dance and architecture and statuary and painting they are the institutions of laws and the founders of civil society and the inventors of the art of life and the teachers who draw into a certain propinquity with the beautiful and the true that partial apprehension of the agencies of the invisible world which is called religion language color form and religion and civil habits of action are all the instruments and materials of poetry this definition is going to be more significant and specific about the uh, poet and uh, poetry and prose the distinction between poets and prose writer is a vulgar error the distinction between philosopher and poets has been anticipated Plato was essentially a poet the truth and splendor of his imagery and the melody of his language are most intense that it is possible to conceive he re he rejected the measures of the epic dramatic and lyrical forms because he sought to kindle a harmony in thought of divested of shape and action and he forbid forbore to invent any regular plane of a rhythm which would include under determinate form and variety pose of his style a poem is the very image of life expressed in its eternal truth there is this difference between a story and a poem that a story is a catalog of detached facts uh, which have no other connection than time place circumstances cause and effect the other is the creation of action according to unchangeable form of human nature poetry is ever accompanied with pleasure all spirits on which it falls upon themselves to receive the wisdom which is mingled uh, with its delight you would read a poet is a nightingale who sits in darkness and sings to cheer its own solitude with sweet sounds i repeat a poet is a nightingale who sits in darkness and sings to cheers its own solitude with sweet sounds the whole objection however of the immortality of poetry rest upon a micro misconception of the manner in which poetry acts to produce the moral improvement of man poetry alone in form in action or in language which has rendered its epoch memorable above all others and the storehouse of examples to everlasting uh, time i repeat poetry alone in form in action in form in action or in language which has rendered this epoch memorable above all others and the storehouse of examples of everlasting time poetry is a word of lightning ever unsheathed which consumes the scabbard that would contain it and thus we observe that all dramatic writings of this nature are unimaginative in a singular degree i kindly now next pair i am reading uh, this is very much related to the how the poetry is a reason for the social revolution and this is very significant paragraph the connection of poetry and social good is more observable in drama than in whatever other form and it is indisputable that the highest perfection of human society has ever corresponded with the highest dramatic excellence and that the corruption or the extinction of the drama in a nation where it has once flourished is a mark of a corruption of manners and 
an extinction of the energies which is sustain the soul uh, of social life so uh, but as machiavelli says of political institutions that life may be preserved and renewed if man should arise capable of bringing back the drama to its principle the next para poetry ever communicates all the pleasures which men are capable of receiving i repeat poetry ever communicates all the pleasures which men are capable of receiving in ends poetry in rome seemed to follow rather than accompany the perfection of political and dramatic society of rome lived in its institutions for whatever of beautiful true and majestic they contained could have sprung only from the faculty which create the order in which they consist consist uh, it is probable that the poetry of moses job david solomon and isaiah had produced a great effect upon the mind of jesus and his disciples the next quote was, is very significant from the point of view of the slavery and the freedom of women the abolition of personal slavery is the basis of the highest political hope that it can enter into the minds of men to conceive the freedom freedom of women produced the poetry of sexual love love becomes a religion and of whose worship were ever present homer was the first and dante the second epic poet that is the second poet the series of whose creations bore a defined and intelligible relations to the knowledge and sentiments and relation of the age in which he lived and of the ages which followed it developing itself in the correspondence with their development the age image immediately succeeding to that of dante petrarch and boccaccio was characterized by a revival of painting sculpture and architecture chaucer caught on the sacred inspiration and the superstructure of english literature is based upon the materials of the italian invention and these are the most famous poets as well dante petrarch boccaccio chaucer production and assurance of pleasure in this highest sense is true utility those who produced and preserved this pleasure are poets or poetical philosophers this next paragraph would make you understand how significant the poetry is for the world and the all civilizations it exceeds all imagination to conceive what would have been the moral condition of the world if neither dante petrarch boccaccio chaucer shakespeare caldron lord bacon and milton had ever existed if raphael and michael angelo had ever been born if the hebrew poetry had never been translated if a revival of the study of greek literature had never taken place if no more of the ancient sculpture had been handed down to us and if the poetry of the relation of the ancient world had been extinguished uh, together with its belief the human mind could never accept uh, by the interventions of these excitements have been awakened to the inventions of the gross science and that applications of analytical reasoning to the aberrations of society uh, which is to which is uh, which intended to exalt over the uh, direct expressions of the inventive and creative faculty itself the next pen itself the next para according to my the poetry in these systems of thought is concealed by the accumulations of fact and calculating process there is no want of knowledge respecting respecting what is wisest and the best in moral government and political economy or at least what is wiser and better than what men now practice and endure this is the most significant para for the creation of poetry the function of the political faculty are twofold by one it creates new materials of knowledge and power and pleasure by the other other it endangers in the mind a desire to reproduce and arrange them according to a certain rhythm 
an order which they may be called the beautiful and the good further pp shelley says that i appeal to the greatest poets of the present day whether it is not an error to assert that the finest passages of the poetry are produced by labor and study uh, further he says for milton conceived the paradise lost as a whole before he executed it in portions we have his own authority also for the muse having uh, dictated to him the unpremeditated song and let this be an answer to those who would allege the 56 various readings of the first line of the orlando Fur furioso compositions so produced are what mosaic is to painting compositions so produced are to poetry what mosaic is to painting painting the next lines are more significant the enthusiasm of virtue love patriotism and friendship is essentially with the with such emotions and whiles they last self appears as what is in an atom to a universe poets are not only subject to these experiences as spirit of the most refined organizations poetry redeems from decay the visitations of the divinity in men poetry turns all things to loveliness it exalts the beauty of that which is most beautiful and it adds beauty to that which is most deformed how a poet could be so reformed and wise and let's understand it from the perspective of pb shelley he says a poet as he is the author to the others of the highest wisdom pleasure virtue and glory so he ought personally to be the happiest the best the wisest and the most illustrious of men as to his glory let time be challenged to declare whether the fame of any other institutions of human life be comparable to that of a poet that he is the wisest the happiest the best in as much as he is a poet is equally incontrovertible the greatest poets have been men of the most spotless virtue of the most consummate prudence and if we would look into the interior of their lives the most fortunate of the man and the exceptions as they regarded those who possess the poetic faculty in a higher yet inferior degree will be found on consideration to confine rather than destroy the rule how a poet is different from common people or common man and shelley says a poet becomes a man and is abandoned to the sudden reflux of the influences under which other others habitually live but as he is more delicately organized than other men and sensible to pain and pleasure both his own and of the others in a degree unknown to them he will avoid the one and pursue the other with uh, with an order proportioned to his difference and he renders himself obnoxious to calm when he neglects to the observe the circumstances under which these objects of universal pursuit and flight have disguised themselves in one another's garment in the la in the last two segments one he says for poetry and the other he says for the poet he says finally concluding the most unfailing herald companion and follower of the awakening of the great people to work a beneficial change in opinion on institution is poetry and finally he says poets are the heroines of an unapprehended inspiration the mirror of the gigantic shadow with futurity cast upon the present and he says poets are the unacknowledged legislatures of the world this is the most famous quote of uh, p b shelley regarding the poetry and i repeat poets are the unacknowledged legislatures of the world thank you for listening and watching please subscribe my channel success matrix thank you so much